Hey, what's up everybody? Rob here from Ram Studio Comics. Welcome back. So now we're going to jump into this page and refine some of this a little bit. But I just want to show you uh, something. Always make use of a very important part of your page and that is the back of it. Okay, lots of little area to doodle and do what you have to. I don't know. I've always found this a very important part of my page. And I wanted to show you a couple other um, choices that you might make for your illustration. Uh, so what I'm going to be using today is two of these suckers right here. These are pencil lead holders, okay? Um, and what I'm using is one with HB and one with um, 2H. So the 2H, uh, just remember if you see like a 2H, it's going to be a harder lead. And actually, I can tell as soon as I write with this, I need to label these. Some of them have a uh, ability to swap it around and label it. Uh, this is actually the HB. So HBs are a softer lead, which in turn are darker. You got to press a little lighter because you can snap these off easier. And then the 2H is going to be lighter. And again, you can feel it immediately when you use them. That's why I almost don't label them because you can just grab it, make one quick little mark, and you can tell. You get really used to them. So these are the two that I use. And oftentimes to warm up, I'll just do some little rendering on the back of the page. You know, some cross hatching, whatever. What's nice about using this lighter lead as well is that you're able to, you know, use a kneaded eraser, soft erase it back, build up upon it. Again, this is going to retain more of your detail work. Okay, and also remember that when you use these, you're going to want to get something like this to sharpen them. Goes in like this and rotates. Always takes me a second to get going, but you don't want to force it. It'll snap the lead, so you just want to slowly get it going. And then once it gets going, generally, <laughs> I'm struggling today, folks. Just slowly get it going and you'll get it sharp. It actually doesn't take too many rotations, but again, I find this better than trying to force it because you'll snap these leads. Now, again, the 2H lead is going to be more resilient to the process here. The HB, and if you go with a you know, 2B, 3B, just remember the higher the number goes from HB up, like 2B, 3B, it's getting darker. It means blacker. Uh, where hardness, you're going to go the opposite. After you pass the HB mark, you're going to go 3H, 4H, and those are actually going to get lighter because they mean a harder lead, which in turn is going to give you a lighter, you know. I'm not going to get into all that right now for what we're doing. These are the two primary bad boys I use. I just wanted to share that with you. So now, let's flip the page back over and jump into refining these panels. Okay, so here we go. So we're going to start off with panel one. Now, generally, I'll be honest, if I'm excited about a certain panel, I kind of go to wherever my excitement is. Uh, you know, but for the sake of this video, we're going to go right here to panel number one. Now, one thing I do want to make sure to note, keep in mind that when you're working with a client, one integral part after this rough draft stage is changes. Okay, almost every client is going to want changes. I've worked with very few clients that wanted uh, little to no changes. Uh, those are actually the great ones. That's always an awesome thing. But uh, just be ready, especially in the beginning, that you're going to make lots and lots of changes. Now, obviously, for the sake of this video and time, I'm just going to jump right in. And plus, it's my uh, my own vision. So I can kind of just say, this is exactly what I wanted. But typical changes are going to be changing the camera angle, illustrating a detail more clearly that the uh, viewer isn't aware of. If, you know, They're kind of concerned that it's not going to be what they hoped, then they might have you illustrate something. Uh, they might have you change a, a jacket on a character. Some changes are ultra minute, and other ones are insanely time consuming and, and total revisions. And how you handle that is gonna determine whether or not you work with that client again or in the industry as a whole. So just be aware that a lot of times when people talk about art, they, uh, they get all excited and, you know, teary-eyed and they're just like, wow, I'm an artist. I want to be an artist. You know, it's, it'd be amazing. They don't think about the work that goes into changes. Again, this relates more to what I've experienced with storyboards, but I had some horrendous changes and some of them that were so uh, silly at times. Like somebody that just, you're working with a client that couldn't envision a certain thing and they would literally have you change one small detail at a time until they got to where they needed it to be. Um... It's a tough thing because do you uh, you know do you excel in that situation or do you get flustered and do you uh, you know buckle? So it's it's definitely a make you or break you type thing. So be aware of that you will have to make changes for clients and you want to be as uh, easy to work with as possible. 
so that you retain the uh, the work. So again, I'm gonna just jump in here like we didn't have any changes to make. I'm gonna start detailing. So I'm using the base information here as uh, you know a mannequin of sorts to get in here and you know refine what I've got. And I'm gonna start doing things like uh, I can get rid of these arrows. They're not supposed to really be in there. Now keep in mind I'm using a kneaded eraser and also I've got this Prismacolor uh, Magic Rub Eraser which is better for larger areas, things like that. And so what I want to do here is I'm just going to keep refining this by using the kneaded eraser to soft erase the information back and then try to, you know, find these ideas. So he's wearing this kind of like headpiece techie thing around, you know, it's goes to the back of his head like this. You know, you're going to see the ear here, the jaw there. He's got some hair. Uh, now, obviously, if you got a character sheet to work with, that's always great. If it's your own character and you really know them, then uh, you're just going to you know, remember what they look like. But uh, I think it's always helpful to, to, to do 360 uh, turntables of all your characters. Uh, especially if you're working with a team, it's really beneficial because you can always reference those to the team and keep everybody on the same page there. I can see I've kind of got him looking a little too bulky. This is one of the things that I need to refine as I go here. Say, well, he's a doctor, not a weightlifter, so or not an action uh, character, you know, like a, a superhero character in the the um, comic. I think what helps here is if you know there's that relationship difference. Like for instance, you you know you see the bulkier characters, they look stronger. You see the characters that you know, aren't as in shape, they're, they're a little pudgier in the middle and things like that. It's important to have that, um, that variation. So now the other thing that I might do here, or that I will do, I should say, is, um, you know, get in some of these screens. I might, you know, at first this was just a rough sketch. So, you know, we might get in here and say, well, we got to really establish some perspective, you know, based on where we're looking at in the scene, we're pretty much eye level. You know, you can tell this camera isn't too high, too low or anything like that. Um, but we still want to know where our perspective is, like where's the back wall? Is there a corner to the room back here? Is it further off camera? Uh, you know, we got to think about those things. We could probably make the argument that it's a bit of a, a two-point perspective like this, but not very dramatic in its angle. So if you pay attention to even the room around you, you can see that things aren't perfectly parallel with your vision at all times or you know depending on where you're at in the room or something like that I guess nothing's ever parallel to your vision but it's it's got vanishing points so it's got uh, some perspective going on here like this and like this you know slight angles and everything is going to reside on those except for things that are tilted uh, things that are offset maybe tipped over there's there's different reasons why it doesn't line align to every uh, bit of this information but for the most part we're just going to kind of overlap these screens it's kind of a easy way to make it look more advanced or more uh, kind of techy just kind of place a bunch of these primitive shapes all over the place you're going to have some control panels that are going to again angle away from this perspective a little bit And I'm kind of wondering if I want it to look like his hands are actually on the panels because one of the things I fight with when trying to do uh, science fiction, you know, futuristic uh, storytelling is, you know, what things would really exist in this timeline? You know, would there even be any need for, um, you know, touching the screens at this point? I would imagine this far into the future, uh, which is, you know, I think I got it pinpointed somewhere around 25 uh, 100 years, you know, year 2500, somewhere around there for uh, for Earth. So, you know, pretty far into the future where basically this wouldn't, you know, would they even have screens at that point? Wouldn't everything just be projections? And we could still turn this into that. You know, this isn't a concrete part. You know, it could be they're projections, but they're still, uh, they look solid. You know, there's all sorts of ways you could explain it with the storytelling as well. But we'll just say that, you know, they're kind of these overlapping stack screens. I don't think his hand's actually going to be touching them. Maybe he's just kind of doing like aerial hand gestures. We could try something like that. 
obviously going into it, it's probably better to have more of your story kind of pinned down. But then there's a lot of it, I think, that you just kind of figure out as you go because, you know, there's so much that goes into a storytelling and backstory and details in, in the scene. So right now we're just going to work on the visuals. And basically, I always think that overlapping little details make things look more impressive. So I'm going to do some of that. There's going to be little overlapping shapes here and there. Some details on the back wall. Even if it's some just like techie lines back here. Those will be lighter. Definitely don't want that weird line. It looks like it's going right into his head there. So I got to adjust that. And then I'll also do something where I just kind of throw a shadow on the back wall. Kind of adds a little bit more of a uh, geometry to the, you know, the background, the composition there. Obviously there's already a lot of geometry going on there. And then some kind of bottom, um, edging to these devices. Maybe the maybe the lower portion is actual solid material and everything projects up. So again, we could really kind of imagine lots of different things for the idea of what's in here. You know, the idea how this technology works. So just like that, we've got a little bit closer rendition. Still not liking the shirt or jacket here. I have to figure that out. That's another funny thing about rotating characters on the page. You'll draw them forward facing or side view or whatever profile and everything looks good. And then you go to uh, shift them on the page and you're like, well, wait a second. What does the back of their jacket look like? And you have to, you have to figure all that stuff out. So there's another little refinement and I'd like to do this in stages. So I think what I'm gonna do here is we're gonna call that our next level of refinement and then we're going to move over to the next panel so let's kind of readjust here okay so I lost a little bit of that video unfortunately the joys of recording on an iPhone um, so basically what I talked about is moving these pieces around uh, overlapping the shapes to get the arm to go away from camera and then back towards camera so you're gonna, you know, overlap the shoulder. So really you start with the trapezius and the, you know, kind of shoulder blade or terrace minor, terrace major, but really the trapezius becomes pretty dominant at this angle. Uh, then the shoulder, you know, there's the deltoid and then um, the uh, bicep, tricep. I always forget this middle one, but it's uh, basically, you know, just an overlapping process. So you wanna think about these overlapping away. And then as the form comes back towards us, it's going to overlap and you're going to see the opening of the wrist and you're going to attach the fist. And the other thing I talked about uh, was that, you know, editing this. So basically throwing in these basic shapes and if it doesn't look right, then you just keep nudging things around. So originally the shoulder was over here. I raced that back and brought it in more uh, because I felt like, you know, based on the way he's turning, the shoulder is going to rotate and start to turn this way. So you're constantly kind of thinking of your characters like they're on a turntable and you're kind of maneuvering them around. Now, if you can't get this right and you're not good at using like say a, um, a mannequin or whatever, uh, a um, drawing mannequin uh, and maybe figuring this out, then the next best thing or probably the best thing even ahead of that is to just use photos. So you would take photos of yourself in this pose uh, or get one of your friends to do it and you know it's a lot easier so get a tripod take a shot and just you have to learn to look through the picture i'm not doing that in this case i generally can work through these and figure it out in fact if it's not entirely correct i'm generally okay with that i don't try to get this uh exactness to my work uh, but just keep in mind that's what a lot of artists do and uh, i have done it you know plenty of times so i'm not uh it's not like i've never done it i just basically Sometimes we'll work through it in a different way. So I also want there to be like this, um, you know, doctor's table right there that's closer to the camera. I want it to be on an angle so it kind of, you know, avoid drawing everything straight up, you know, vertical and horizontal. Try to put angles in there. Makes for a more interesting composition. You know, figure out where your your uh, borders are. Get yourself, um, you know, your ruler. Just kind of drop some of these lines in here. You can kind of use these guides here on the page uh, right here. Kind of align that to the top and bottom. Get a straight edge. Drop that in there. So 
so on and so forth. So it's basically just uh, getting um, getting close, closer with each step, I guess. Um, and then ultimately refining it to a level you're happy with. Um, I always feel like if I just, you know, slowly keep moving these shapes around, I'll figure something out. So again, I may raise the uh, trapezius here. I may tuck the chin down. Uh, I go for whatever looks the most uh, awkward about the shot, you know, kind of solve the biggest problem first and then go from there. Uh, so let's see if I kind of fix his eye here. Now the other thing is I'll work in a consistency of um, what's the most important in this shot as well. So I really want the, the hand pose to look accurate. I want the face to be the most accurate, okay? So, you know, we identify with the faces of our characters first and then it kind of, we, you know, span out from there. So make sure if anything, you put the most time on the face uh, and then, you know, obviously don't underestimate things like composition. Um, but for this shot, I don't know if I'll even do the background. If I do, I may have like a little bit of some techie stuff back here, maybe a computer device or something just to kind of show where we're at. But you don't have to keep showing the viewer where you're at. I mean, I guess we're all, you know, pretty aware of that. If we, you know, read comics a lot, you see that a lot of artists will do an establishing shot, start, uh, pretty strong with the background and then just you know uh, hint back to it here and there um, but really they'll they'll kind of start to focus more on the character interaction which you know obviously is the most um, important part of the uh, storytelling so but you do have to show them where they're at in the scene so that once you've done that you can uh, start to you know have a little bit more fun with just the character development I'm getting this creepy alien on his back there. Hopefully you can see this because this, this pencil is lighter. But um, Now, once I have enough of this in place and the, uh, you know, the overall kind of um, uh, main bits of information, everything's kind of there. Uh, once I'm start to, once I'm more uh, sure of what I want to see, then I'll start to jump in with that uh, softer lead. So what I think I'm going to have to do here just to make this a little bit more... Uh, you know, effective for showing you this whole page is I'll have to time lapse some of this because it would just be too awfully long uh, for me to sit here and uh, you know narrate the whole thing in real time. And I'll be honest, it kind of uh, separates my uh, my focus a little bit uh, because with this particular way of court recording, I got a few things going on here that I'm not used to. That's why digital recordings are so much easier, or at least I'm used to them. So what I'm going to do is is kind of uh, stop here again um you know it's it's a really the same process over and over again but the things i'm thinking about are focal points you know so the focal point in this shot is his face his reaction and pointing to the aliens it's all kind of right here in fact i don't even know if the rest of this information is important but we do want to show him uh you know removing the jacket and then the table so i guess it's all kind of pertinent information but it's you know, the the focal points up here. So we want our information to be more detailed or more interesting in that area. Uh, you can even use your shapes of shadows to kind of point to bits of this information. You can do rendering lines. If it's a excitement shot, you know, like something like pow, bam, uh, you can do some motion lines. I don't know if this one needs that. I mean, I guess it kind of is an impact shot because he's like, look at this freaky thing on my back. Holy moly, you know. Uh, so you could do some little action lines to that or a little, you know, those little burst uh, lines that you get, something like that, whatever. That's if you're really trying to push it a little bit more. Uh, but I'm really going to repeat this process from panel to panel now. You know, this is a pretty basic one. We're just going to soft erase and redraw this. Start to drop in some more detail, some shadows, things like that. Uh, but I'll narrate over top, but it'll just be a little bit faster because, again, if not, this will take forever. So... With that, let's uh, let's press forward. Okay, so now we're gonna jump in and time lapses. So obviously my hand is gonna be moving a lot faster, uh, but I didn't want this to be too repetitive, so I just figured it would make more sense to do it this way. Uh, so the same thing is occurring where I'm soft erasing, redrawing in some of the details. You probably notice too that once I get enough of that base information in place, uh, I start to become a little bit more confident in the uh, the shapes that I'm looking for 
Uh, it's not to say that I couldn't keep revisiting this and keep trying to make it better, redrawing shots from different angles. Oftentimes I'll find myself doing that. Uh, you know, I might get through a panel, sometimes even halfway, and then realize I'm just not liking it as much as I thought with the initial idea. Um, now generally, like I've already mentioned, you want to try to fix things as much as possible in the rough sketch stage, but it just doesn't always happen that way. Sometimes you're, um, you know, you're hit with uh, inspiration of a different idea, different camera angle, and I think that until you explore that, you don't end up getting the most out of your work. Like, to me, this page still feels pretty boring. In fact, I may go back and just change it for the sake of the comic, but for the video here, I wanted to just keep moving forward, um, but I will at times change a certain panel. Um, back before digital was uh, prevalent, I would even tape a sheet of paper uh, over top of another panel if it was already inked and things like that. So now with digital, it's obviously easier to just you know scan and uh, update it in something like Photoshop or Clip Studio Paint or even Procreate. But yeah, so with this one, again, I'm just using the two different LEDs. You see, I put a rider under my hand. I'm notorious for smearing through my work. So uh, I started to notice that and, you know, I started using a piece of paper as a, as a safety um, so I don't smear the pencils too much. And that's also because I'm starting to use more of the HP lead. Like you can notice the line around his arm is a bit darker. And I do that just because it helps me to like build a little bit more depth into my pencils. Uh, but there's sometimes I'll just simply press harder with the 2H lead and do entire uh, shots with just 2H. So you can still get a pretty dark line with the 2H lead, um, but it's just depending on how I'm feeling, I guess. So sometimes I use the HB lead to, you know, kind of commit to certain ideas, uh, punch up the line weight, and uh, again, kind of develop a little bit more depth into the, uh, the uh, pencil work. So, you know, at this stage I'm doing more textures, uh, trying to render out some more of the aliens uh, kind of uh, overlapping texture lines that are on the tentacles, trying to work through the, uh, the coat. So there's certain materials and effects that take me longer, uh, one of which will be that coat. Like it just, uh, sometimes I'm in like kind of a mood or a zone to draw clothing, and other times I have to revisit it and study the patterns again. Uh, so clothing is kind of like one of those Achilles, heel, uh, Achilles heels, uh, if that's the right way to say it, inside of my own workflow and my own artwork. So, uh, but I can't, I can't dodge it, right? You know, you got to have clothing in your, your comics and lots of different materials. Uh, not everybody can just be running around with their shirts off, you know. So uh, I force myself to practice it often. But again, it's one of those things where... I look at it and go, oh, you know, am I drawing it right today? Let me go back, let me study some fabrics and materials. And that's a lot of times when I'll flip the page over and I'll use the back of the board, like I mentioned earlier, uh, as far as, you know, practicing, practicing textures. Uh, and a lot of times it's, once you get the texture right, you kind of refigure it out and you're back in the zone with it. And I noticed that about a lot of textures. So one of the tips that I wanted to give in this video that I feel myself wanting to do in this book again is rough everything out, go through the entire book, rough it all out. And then when you do something like your fabrics or one of the things that's harder for you, it could be maybe the techie devices in the background, whatever it is, or maybe all of these things, categorize it and literally go through some of those pages and knock out that one thing. Now that's not always gonna work with the way that you produce a book and maybe you're working on a team and that doesn't make as much sense. But for my own book, I definitely think that's a huge time saver. So again, if it's something that you, it's not your strong suit, you gotta revisit it. You might as well go through those pages uh, once you get in the zone for that and knock it all out. So again, adding a bunch of those little repetitive textures here on the alien. Now, I'm also the one that's inking this, so I really don't have to render as much of this in detail as I do sometimes. Uh, for the sake of the video, I obviously wanna do that, but also, uh, sometimes it's just a confidence boost, you know, to get the panel to look the way I want. Uh, and, and quite honestly, sometimes I even overcompensate some rendering for a panel that's maybe not as good as I think it should be. I just figure, well, I'll put like more icing on the cake and try to make it look cool. Uh, but maybe the pose isn't as great. Now, again, that's probably not 
the best pearl of advice to young artists or anything like that, you want to get the foundational elements of your your things right, your composition, your gesture drawing, your bodies and, and motion, all those things. But there are times that you know you just want to try to salvage something and you render and try to make it look cool with some different effects and you know because it all cohesively fits together. So we're going to bring this one to a close. Hopefully this video has been informative for you. I'm going to be bringing you more videos on the other panels and we'll just continue on with this series. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Make sure to click uh, the like and share it with your friends and more content's on the way. So as always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and bye for now.